Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this series of tutorials, I'm going to show my process creating photorealistic still life renders. In the first video, I'm going to show you how I managed to prepare a simple 3D model blocking. Note that in this tutorial, we require you to have fundamental knowledge in operating Autodesk Maya, like navigating viewport, creating or manipulate object, and last but not least, basic modeling. We first create a cube and scale it to match the size of the wooden plate. I'm using extrude here, offset uh, the face a little bit so that we can have the barrel of the woods. And extrude it once again, all the way down. In this stage, it's very important to follow the proportion correctly because if you get it wrongly, you will probably go to the wrong direction at the end of the day. So here we are creating a plate. You can always start thing by using the most simple uh, primitives. If it is like a cylinder or circle thing, always start with a basic uh, cylinder shapes. And if it looks square, just start with a cube. So everything here is pretty straightforward. And barrel some of the area if it is necessary. Here we are creating the water part and flatten the bottom area. Be sure to put it right above the wooden plate. And now we are going to create a cap for it. We don't really have to open up a hole now, you know. We just need a simple shapes will do. And it's okay to have the cap connected to the body because at the end of the day, we are going to replace the entire thing. The proportion is the only focus in this stage. Not topology or how is the model was constructed. And here we are creating the mark. Always be sure to use snapping to snap to the surface so that it won't clip into each other. And now we will be creating the candle. As you can see here, everything I do is pretty much the same. I'm using extrude, bevel, adding edge, and move them around to form the shape I wanted. And also using extrude for creating the volume. Be careful sometime after you're using extrude to create a volume, you might need to reverse the face. And here we are creating the waffle. So the waffle wasn't formed by one single shape, instead it is a few rectangle clipping together and just want to form an initial shape. It doesn't really matter for now because we are going to put this thing into ZBrush and remesh the entire thing. So we don't really have to care about topology as I mentioned earlier. For an object like fog, you can always start with plane because it gives you more flexibility. You can extrude all the edges by yourself. And when you get the entire shape, then only you extrude it to get a little bit of volume. And as like what I mentioned earlier, we don't really need to model the details like every single spike. We only need the overall shape. 
And now we are going to place it right. It is okay to scale it and deform the shapes a little bit if necessary. Here I'm creating a blocking for the blanket. I'm using a cylinder as a base model and sculpt on top of it, and maybe deform a little bit by using soft selection. However, this will not be your final mesh. These are just blocking so that we can have an idea of how the entire thing looks like. You don't really have to go too serious on the shape, as long as the shape is recognizable and we can see how much space it is taking in the camera then it should be good enough. And now we are creating the book blocking. The book blocking should be the most simple object in the scene. Just a rectangle and place it in the right location. For the clothing, I am going to create a very high resolution plane. And in my case here, I'm using 50 times 50. And now change your modeling, tap to FX, go to end cloth, assign end cloth and go under effects and assign turbulence to the end cloth and you get to raise the magnitude a little bit and go to your nucleus and check use plane go into your maya preference and set playback speed to play every frame now you can hit the play button and the cloth should be moving pause whenever you're happy with the shape hit ctrl d to duplicate your simulated model so that it unlink all the history or relationship and be sure to delete everything that created by the simulation like I did in the video. Now you can use some soft selection to deform the shape of the cloth to match the reference. Bear in mind that this will not be your final model. We are going to use Marvelous Designer in the later tutorial to create a better looking cloth. Now we will adjust or the position a little bit to match with the reference. Try not to place things too organized or parallel because it will look fake at some point. Now we are going to scale the entire thing to the real world scale. Go to create, measure tool. Hit V to snap each locator, the tip of the cup and the end of the cup. Group your measure tools along with all the meshes and scale them up together. I am scaling it all the way to 12 cm and then the size of the cup should be able to define all the objects around the scene. Now we are creating a new camera and be sure to switch that new camera scene. Now we can navigate to the angle to match with the reference. Go to VWay render setting and change your render engine to VWay GPU with RTX check and also change your resolution to portrait mode. Navigate your camera to the right angle to match with the reference. We will check on every object's position and make sure they match the reference. Now I'm creating simple pillow to put in the background as you can see in the reference. And duplicate 5 of them in total.
Here I'm changing my focal length to 24 because it seems to me that this picture looks more distorted and more background should be able to see when you use a lower amount of focal length. And here I'm creating two simple sphere like in the scene. And note that this will not be our final lighting as well. It's just for the previewing purpose so that people will have a rough idea of how this thing is going to look like at the end. And here I'm happy with my blocking. I will go to File and Project Windows. What this will do is to create a set of folders so that we can save all our textures and all the related works into one single folder. Every time you want to work on this project again, you should set project every time you open up a fresh Maya. Be sure to save your current file to MA format in the scene folder. Well, so this is how I prepare a scene for a photorealistic render. In the next video, we will start to turn some parts of this blocking to high resolution model, as well as putting texture by using Subsum Painter. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.